evening. Throat Punch Games has now become a cult dedicated to Yogg Sathoth. But some of you may not worship Yogg. So now we must battle for the fate of the Elder Gods in Arkham. Join me and let's learn together. Fate of the Elder Gods is a simple move and action game. On your turn, you will ready things called artifacts at the start. You can gain these through various actions. You start with a hand of cards. These cards have various effects on the other side. We'll talk about it at the end. But for now, notice their locations. Spread throughout Arkham are different locations. And we have the Fate icon. The current player will play a card wherever the Fate icon is to move it to that location. If I spend a red card here, I may move the fate icon to the red area. You may spend two of the same type of card as a wild to move it anywhere. Then, each location has different actions. But when you get there, you arouse suspicion. So meddling investigators move in. If there's ever more than three, all of them go to your home base. You also play one of your people there. If you have three or a majority, you may take two actions or a superpowered action. If not, you roll the fate die. If you roll Cthulhu's face, you get to do the control action. After you've finished your action, you may cast spells. These location cards on the other side have spells. They have requirements. And it will depend on the, the place you go to. If the fate icon was here, and it shows a green, and there is a yellow card, I may cast this card by placing it above here. This readied spell can be used in the future, or I may use this icon when casting spells on additional turns. Let's go through the different actions and locations. Here is the outer world. In the outer world, you will roll dice for each cultist. If you get a tentacle, the cultist is sacrifice. If you roll a Cthulhu, he is not. If you have control. Every elder god has a sheet. When you go grow in power, you move your icon. Getting all the way around, you win the game. We also have the museum. The museum is where ancient artifacts of lore are found. You may choose one of them. If you gain control, you may discard these and draw two new ones. The ceremony. The ceremony is twofold. Every Elder God has a power. In addition, there are wild spell cards that will allow you to teleport anywhere, or it is the only card that by itself can take you to the other world. In addition, in the ceremony, if you have control, you may sacrifice two of your cultists. To move up once in the track. The streets of Arkham are where you arouse suspicion from meddling investigators. You will give two investigators from the supply or from your own board and you cause a raid. Anytime a raid happens you roll the dice. If an elder sign or a greater elder sign occurs you put these on your player boards. These can cause curses, we'll talk about it in a second. In the gathering, you will take people from the void, where they go if they're devoured, and put them on your player board and move one of them anywhere else. 
Finally, we have the library. Here you can draw more spell cards. At the end of your turn, moving and doing your actions, you draw one spell card or up to three if you're empty. How do we win? As I said before, whenever you gain power for your god, you move around. The first player to start here and go all the way around wins. However, meddling investigators will place these tokens on your board. If your token ever moves on top of this, you gain a curse. This is handed to the player on your left. They will read it, and eventually this will occur. If it does, they will do some sort of evil effect on you and your cult. If you ever fill your entire player board with this, the game instantly ends and the player with the least number of these tokens wins. May the best Elder God prevail. So let's get to her thoughts. First things first, you can tell why there's no big fat cultist. Second, uh, let's talk about this game. I love this game a lot. It's a lot of fun. My copy's signed. Yay! Um, but there's some really great things about this game that are a lot of fun. First, um, in terms of mechanics, I give it a 4.5 out of 5. It's a fantastic game. It can have a bit of a runaway leader problem though. So, it really comes down to social pressure to kind of keep people down, but it doesn't seem like there's a built-in mechanic to kind of smack people. Theme, this is a 5 out of 5. I feel like a cultist, even when I'm not wearing a uh, cheap ha uh, Halloween robe. It's a lot of fun. Every god's got its own little power. Every location feels like it should. I feel like an evil cultist. Rules, um, I like the rules. The rules are thought fun. I think they may need a bit more. The font side's great, but I think it needs a bit more pictures to kind of keep me in the game and make sure I got all the rules. But it's something you'll pick up on. So I give it a 4.25 out of 5. In terms of execution, I like a lot of the stuff. These are great. Everyone, like they're not little weepy miniatures. This guy's amazing. I give it a 4.75. Uh, 4.75 out of 5. Why you ask? I hate little cards. They drive me nuts. Because um, big fat fingers can't really shuffle them that well. And the text gets kind of small on them. But it's still done well. And these cards are pretty good quality. Overall, 92.5%. Fantastic game. Something well worth bringing out and playing any time of the year. I really like it. Uh, Fabled Nexus knocked it out of the park. Uh, I'm Ed from Throat Punch Games at Throat Punch G on Twitter, Throat Punch Games on Facebook and Instagram. Like and sub subscribe for daily content and contests. Thanks for watching.